Today we're doing another PC build video. Instead of doing my main production PC, which we worked on last time, we're doing a themed build. We're doing an 80s themed streaming computer. This is going in my retro game room that I have in one of our spare bedrooms upstairs, and I'm using it to live stream all of my retro games. So from GameCube, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, original Xbox, I've got a PS3 up there, some Sega stuff that I've never honestly touched before, super stoked for, and some cool Game Boy stuff. So I'm going to have to spend some time developing the layouts for it and making it look nice and neat. But I wanted a build that, at least on a surface level of as as aesthetics, words are hard, looks 80s themed. And I got a couple of cool parts submitted for it. I'm pretty stoked to show you guys. So we're going to get into it, and I am doing another live stream for this, so we'll be integrating the live stream footage. I think you're going to like it. So here on the workbench, we have a lovely assortment of parts, some of which were provided graciously by some companies. This is actually my second, actually this is my first build where I did not buy a single part in this build myself, which is a little weird for me because I've always done that or you know, I've only ever had like a single part submitted or something like that. This entire build was contributed, save for the power supply, which I think was like some of the cost was contributed by one of our Discord members or something a long time, but this is, it's a 1000 watt power supply box, but it's actually an 850 watt power supply that came out of my old rig when I was upgrading. So other than that, everything else has contributed. So we're putting this, what started the, this build was the DIY PC case here. This is actually my second build in their cases for some reason. It's super cheap, but it's got a nice little, you know, 80s theme to it that I really wanted to take advantage of with the nice pink purple stripe. It's got some LED lit fans. I really wanted to utilize this in my retro game room for an 80s themed build. And so to fill it, we have some pretty cool stuff. We have the i9-9900K from Intel, which I'm just realizing I didn't bring over here to put on the table, so I'll have to go get that in a minute. Uh, and that is going in this really badass motherboard from Asus. This is the Asus ROG Maximus Gene. Uh, it is a micro ATX motherboard for the, for the Z390 chipset for my i9-9900K. This motherboard is not even available in the US under normal circumstances at the moment. This and the Apex both, which they also sent me, which we'll be covering later, not even available in the US yet, and we're already doing a build with it, which is pretty freaking cool. Really awesome motherboard for this MATX form factor that we're rolling with. We're cooling it with the Corsair H100i, it's not actually what I was going to use, but it's what we ended up with, and thanks to Corsair for sending it out regardless. Uh, we've got XPG 16 gigs of their DDR4 3000 Spectrix RAM. Got a nice little crazy color scheme going, so that way we can keep ridiculous. I don't know how aesthetically this is going to turn out, but I'm going for ridiculous neon looks, and hopefully we accomplish that. XPG also sent out a 512 gig M.2 NVMe SSD, so we got fast storage to boot from and keep it quiet. And then Zotac sent out their GTX 1070 Ti Mini graphics card, which is going to fit in the smaller form factor and still give us plenty of power if we wanted to game upstairs. We're mainly using this for a live streaming rig, but we do have the power to game with this as well. This doesn't fully fit aesthetically, you know, with the look we're going for, but I don't think it'll be super visible for it to matter too much. So I'm pretty stoked. And then, like I said, I have a EVGA Supernova 850 watt power supply in this 1000 watt box. I'm pretty stoked. Well, let's get into it. Checking out the motherboard, the motherboard actually came with quite a lot in terms of accessories and things like that, although most of them were hidden in the box. It comes with the nice little adapter so you can connect all the front panel connectors without having to plug them in individually. It's got a nice layout, heat shields for an M.2 drive and, then, and supported uh, 16x PCIe slot. Comes with Wi-Fi antenna, ROG stickers, things like that. Has tons of I.O. and a pre-installed I.O. shield, which is pretty cool and then it has two ram slots so you'll have to use those weird dual capacity uh, ram sticks if you want a whole lot of ram in your system i don't currently have those available maybe asus wants to hook me up for a future video on this kind of stuff and then it has a dim.2 slot which is dual nvme drives that run directly to the cpu instead of the chipset now i originally set up this xpg drive through that because it's a really fast drive and I really wanted, you know, to get whatever speeds I could out of it just for fun. However, I later learned that using the DIM.2, since it runs to the CPU directly, it limits your graphics card to eight PCIe lanes instead of 16. Theoretically, this isn't a problem, since I, but since I am using the graphics card for encoding and live streaming and things like that, I went ahead off stream and swapped it back to the onboard M.2 drive slot, which would run through the DMI chipset instead of the processor. So 
you know, whichever is up to you. But the fact that you have all this flexibility on an MATX board is pretty crazy. Now, in terms of building in this case, this is a really cheap case. I mentioned this before when I did my wife's choose rig in the, another DIY PC case. Like this is a company that makes things as cheap as possible. And so there's a lot of corners cut in terms of cable management and things like that. It was pretty cramped, but since I already had an M MATX optimized build with a mini graphics card and stuff, I did not honestly run into too many problems other than just fitting my hands where they needed to go in order to connect everything. So I was quite impressed with that. Got the 240 millimeter cooler from Corsair in there. Hooked up really well. Airflow still ended up all right. My cable management isn't great, which is why later you'll see me sticker up the side panel a little bit to cover a little bit of that up without sacrificing too much of our neon glow. Uh, but I was able to remove all the panels, including the front panel with ease, wire everything how I needed, and then one of these side panels does, or, you know, the back side panel does have a big old bubble out to help with cable management a little bit. The drive tray is still a little tough, but for the most part, everything went together pretty well. And that 240 millimeter AIO is keeping that 9900K surprisingly cool. After having fought so many cooling issues with my big i9 7980XE, and my gaming PC's 8700K, it was honestly an amazing feat to kind of hook this up and see how cool this 9900K was. And keep in mind, this motherboard has a really cool feature that I covered on stream in that it has some preset overclocking profiles, two of which are from Der Bauer. So I went ahead and flipped on that uh, five gigahertz adaptive profile from Der Bauer and was able to hit this processor at 5 gigahertz, 4.7 gigahertz for the AVX 512 workload, and it's still keeping really cool. This motherboard is a boss, and this rig turned out pretty cool. The RAM from ADATA is quite nice looking, a little goofy from the side, but looks really, really nice. Got a nice glow, syncs up with the ASUS uh, RS Sync, so that means I get to control it from my motherboard and have it sync up with the lights. Unfortunately, I can't control the Corsair fans that way that easily, but I got it all synced up. We got a sick looking rig. I've got the power. We did it here is our lovely 80s aesthetic inspired themed building computer here and of course it's not using 80s parts that would be absurd for a streaming rig doesn't make any sense but i'm gonna get the comments anyway but here we go it is built it is small it is compact it is easy to take up to my retro game area or fit into any future gaming setup because we might have a more important familial use for that room within the next year or so but it is complete it's a, it's a little louder than I'd like, but you're not going to hear Like, it's not loud at all. It's just, it makes noise, and I'm used to silence-oriented cases. The build is pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with it. I've got, it looks white on camera, but I promise it's pink, purple. It changes. But I've got the Corsair IQ software set up to match the front-facing fans for the Corsair H100i Platinum, synced up to with the pump and then to my motherboard and that XPG RAM is RGB and it's Aura Sync compatible. So it works with the ASUS motherboard software so that I can sort of get the motherboard and the RAM and everything in sync. Unfortunately, the RAM seems to trend more towards the pink and the red and the purple kind of hues for the colors I set, whereas the motherboard is very blue with the RGBs. So I will have to unsync them and set them to specific colors. But everything's lined up with the beautiful purple fan, the purple accents, got some I sticker bombed the stuff, I might add more later, but had fun sticker bombing it. And then that GTX 1070 Ti is going to kick ass when it comes to heavy OBS scene compositing and rendering, because I load up my OBS scenes with a lot of stuff. And then the 9900K, we were actually able to use the built into the motherboard Der Bauer uh, 5 gigahertz 24-7 profile. It's running at 5 gigahertz, still staying, staying under ADC. Able to the, this processor is only second to my i9 7980 XE within my Cinebench testing. So 
pretty freaking cool. This thing's gonna kick butt and rock for my streaming setup and that NVMe drive is gonna be great for recording to and things like that. So again, this is going for some retro game streaming and encoding and eventually it could be used for a secondary editing production rig or something with how specced it is, but nice compact. The case itself, the DIY PC case, is of course a very budget oriented cases. case. It's all the corners are cut, there's virtually no cable management, so you do have a little bit of spaghetti monster rat's nest over towards the AIO radiator, but that's why I stickered up the side panel so you don't have to look at it. And since the, I kept a kind of dark lighting color scheme, you don't see it a whole lot anyway. Airflow is still good, still looks pretty solid. I'm still pretty happy with it overall. And I think it turned out really freaking cool. I am stoked. Pretty happy with it. Thanks to everybody who hung out in the stream and thank you for watching. Huge, huge thanks to Intel for providing the CPU almost like six months ago now. Uh, Asus for providing the Gene motherboard that it's not even available in the US yet. It is pretty freaking cool. Thanks to Zodak for providing the 1070 Ti mini graphics card. Fits perfectly in this kind of build. A full size graphics card would start to be problematic. And thanks to XPGA Data for providing the RAM and the NVMe storage. Lots of NAND flash running through here. Really freaking awesome. And thanks to Corsair for providing the liquid cooler. Thanks to Horse Taco from our Discord server at eposvox.com slash Discord for providing me with the case. Pretty freaking great build. I'm excited to put it to, to use in some streams. Stay tuned to twitch.tv slash eposvox for some retro gaming streams. I am stoked. And I had something else to say about this rig and I forgot about it already. It's really cool. My voice is dying. I've been streaming for like four hours. Pretty rad. Yeah, I don't have a clue what I was going to say. I was going to edit i'll edit it in if i need something but pretty stoked with it thanks so much for watching these build videos uh comment like subscribe check out more tech education stuff on the channel i will see you in the next video